This one starts with a story. We have to go back five years now. I've been in this hobby 20 years. The majority of the time, my time was spent with speakers and in-ear monitors. I gave very little awareness to headphones, especially open back headphones. I had a pair of Bear Dynamics DT250 for 10 years straight and it was used as a work tool and it was fine. Then I discovered open back headphones, one step at a time, and came across my friend Now's channel, Mr. Zeus Pantera. In 2017, there was an argument to be had in my head and the price point of these was £1,700. An astronomical amount for headphones in my estimation and view because all I had spent money on was speakers prior to this and it seemed so small for so much money. So, after sending back the LCDX that I found too heavy, this became my super flagship headphones the largest amount of money I had spent on a pair of headphones five years ago. It's funny how the world changes, isn't it? Let's take a quick look because I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of you are completely done with these headphones. But we're going to be doing something different this time around. These are the headphones themselves. Let's talk. Unboxing this in this display box velvet interior you just want to go and climb inside and lie down You get two very very long annoying cables These are the single-ended and the balanced 4-pin XLR with the proprietary Sennheiser connection I think these are Limo connectors or they look like Limo connectors something very weird proprietary to Sennheiser anyway with the Braille L on this one Thank you. I appreciate that little touch and obviously we get a memory stick here as well which basically gives you the frequency response of the headphones specifically sent to you from Sennheiser in this pouch. There's another single-ended cable in there that looks exactly like this one. Let's dispense with this box, we don't need it. And take a very very quick tour for old time's sake. The connections on this cable are very well constructed. This cable I doubt will ever break. This is Kevlar, very nice very ergonomically annoying three meters keeps a shape i hate the life out of it but it sounds good leave that as it is these are the headphones themselves they're constructed of this plastic polymer type of material it's definitely plastic whether it's plastic polymer i have no idea but um it's very very well constructed this thing will last you a lifetime basically. The adjustment mechanism is in slide form obviously and is designed for very huge heads like this. Um, <clears throat> the headphones tilt forward and back and side to side a little bit so you have some maneuverability. These drivers to date I think might still be the largest dynamic transducer on the market. They're absolutely mammoth and the cups are four fingers. Yeah she's definitely a loose one. These are the headphones, completely open back, absolutely transparent in regards to the atmosphere around you, very light at 330 grams. Unfortunately, the cable gives you another 500 grams on top of it or something, um, estimated guess obviously. Buy a third party cable, please don't live with that thing, it's a nightmare. Um, this is the headphones themselves. Some caveats, when you place these headphones on your head, so this is the size for my head shape, Placing these headphones on my head, even with glasses, it seems pretty damn comfortable to be honest with you. But on most heads, I think you will find that there is a seal breaking here, even if you're not wearing glasses. And the seal in regards to these headphones is key because a lot of people have talked about minimal bass, very little impact and all of these are correct and utterly wrong simultaneously, as we will discuss. To give you a trajectory for this video, I'm not going to talk about the review of these headphones on standard gear. This headphone has been reviewed more times than anything else I'm sure on YouTube and I'm sure none of you are interested in a basic review. That's not why you're here. 
Hopefully, the reason why you're here is to know what this sounds like on the ultra high-end systems when we break the barrier of $15,000 to $25,000. Does it scale up? Does it rival the headphones of today? And should you be purchasing one? And hopefully by the end of the video, all of your questions will be answered. Let's move over to the sound desks, starting with tubes. All right, now we are at the test benches. I've set up two ultra high-end systems for the Sennheiser HD800S testing. On my left, camera right obviously, is the KNHA300 Mark IIs. This is a $4,500 tube amplifier. Feeding that over there is the LROG tubes. That's a 1,200 pound pair of tubes. Plus the Sylvania tubes, we're already tallying $6,000. On my right, camera left obviously, we have the Holo Audio Serene Pre, $3,300. On top of that, the Holo Audio May KTE at $6,000. This chain with the interconnect from Double Helix, thank you so much for sending them in for review. We're tallying $20,000 for this setup and this test. Nobody can say we're not putting flagship equipment on a headphone that I think has more life in it than ever before. For the other test, we have a pair of benchmark monoblock AHB2s being fed by the Holo Audio Serene and May, and also being fed by it by what's behind me. Q-Styles CMA15 Pre and DAC. This unit costs 2,500. With the 6,000 of the benchmark AHB2s, we're tallying $10,000 or so with the interconnect, etc. How much scalability does this give us with the HD800S? I've had this headphone twice now. I've tested it on more equipment than I can count. And does it still have life left in it? First and foremost, let's take tubes. We all know the HD800S sings with tubes, but putting it on a super flagship setup, for some reason, even going from a decent solid state setup, resolution seems to be enhanced. The drivers keep on giving. The frequency response awkwardness at certain areas smooths out. Tamba is perfected in regards to the headphones. And the characteristics of this headphone, the abilities of this headphone, the things it's good at, no other headphone can do. Its staging is huge, mammoth. Has it been beaten? I would say the Sazvara stage is as big. The Elite from Meze Audio stage is as big. But the accuracy of those two headphones is more conducive to a concise sound stage. The HD800S cascades into the distance. Trailing notes just fade away and there's no stopping it. Like where Sazvaras has a barrier showing you this is the precise end of the stage, HD800S keeps going and going. This is in height form, in width form, and most certainly in depth form. But this is not the incredible characteristics of this headphone. Like I stated, there are other headphones that stage just as big. But what is innate to the HD800S is the size of instruments. Each instrument sounds mammoth. It sounds absolutely vast. And this, for certain genres, can be problematic. Pop, for example. Everything sounds overly large and overly stretched. So it, it seems to play around with the mix and it feels as though it's a very huge recital hall. There's a drum kit here, there's a singer here, bassist is here, but you can just walk around it like this. Just walk, 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 finger walking all around the stage. And it, it's just a bit overly stretched for pop music. But when you throw an orchestra live music on this headphone, on that setup, it feels as though you're in an arena that has no boundaries. And it's so 
transparent between you and the driver on that setup, it feels as though you're within the song and grabbing the characteristics of the stage environment. Um, no other headphones does this. For orchestral, they don't touch it. They just can't. They're better in certain ways, but the innate characteristics of this HD800S, these are its strengths. And another aspect of the headphone improves, and that's visceral impact and how low and deep it digs. Like I stated at the beginning of the video, sealing HD800S makes a big difference. It does. But what makes more of a difference, apparently, is the chain. I mean, I've run the HD800S on the A90 D90. I've run it on a Mojo 2. All of the insanities you see behind us, both tubes and solid state, and we will get onto solid state momentarily. I showed uh, one of our viewers, Mo, the HD800S for the very first time on tubes. I think gobsmacked is the impression was, uh, that was immediately apparent. It, it's a headphone that keeps on giving and it's eight years old. And I would, on that setup, put it alongside Utopia, Elite, Diana Fi and the rest of them. Because what it does on that chain, they can't do. It's incredible, absolutely amazing. So if you've not heard it performing like that, when you go to a show next time, make sure to be testing the HD800S on flagship tube amplifiers and a flagship DAC. The second one. Now let's get onto solid state. On the AHB2, HD800S performs exceptionally well. On monoblock AHB2 with May and Serene, it made me buy the unit again. The reason why it was sent to me, thank you Mimic Audio for sending it in for review, was that I owned it, I just never reviewed it on the channel. And a lot of people were asking about it and I did talk about the headphones a lot in regards to comparisons and things. It was a very good indicator of timing in regards to these headphones and basically killing two birds with one stone. On solid state, on the mono blocks, on the May and Serene, it's definitely a three, four thousand dollar headphone, even in 2022. It's absolutely insane. The fact that you can pick it up for about a thousand, two hundred dollars these days, but the chain will cost you the same as a car. That's the problem. It sounds good on other stuff. It doesn't sound anywhere near as good as on the chains behind me. You actually get visceral impact from the mid bass. You actually get in detail, ultra quick, dynamic, fast retrieving sub bass and a beautiful tonality where it's liquid glass on solid state, it's a sunlit day on the tubes. And yes, I would put it with the super flagships. When you run it properly, I mean it runs properly on a lot of things to be honest with you, but when you exceed this marker and you run it on insanity levels of equipment, the fact that the drivers are clean enough and quick enough to showcase such high-end equipment, a lot of other headphones can't, indicates it's still got a fight left in it, indicates it should be part of your collection, and indicates it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with even some of the best in 2022. There is no point giving scores to this headphone. It's been out for too long. But just for you guys, Build quality, sound quality, the way I hear it here on these setups, four solid Tigers out of five. The reason why it's not five is because it's very genre bound. Classical, orchestral, live music, and gaming. It's absolutely mesmerizing. I am Koji CEO. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Don't forget Patreon, where you get early reviews. All the information is down below.